Welcome! It is so good to see you in the being present with you in this moment. It is time for Hug Nation. It is time for a serving of the Belief Buffet. It is a time for a recalibration of our hearts towards our truest, most vibrant, most glowing selves. The topic of the day is practice. This weekend, I went to the birthday party of Marvin Ong, who is an amazing flow artist, as poi and all sorts of of flow arts. He even runs a shop called uh, Master Ong's Prop Shop. And he's just a marvel to watch. His his body moves in ways that, kind of like if you've ever gone to Cirque du Soleil, and you see people doing things, and you're like, this is a huge, I share a species with this creature that is so elegant, wow. I get two feelings from that. One is I just like admiration and awe, and the other is, wow, I'm, uh I'm really not using this to its full potential. And the way one uses this thing to its full potential is through practice. Now, I'm not a big, naturally a big fan of practice. I have a tendency uh, to like to try something and be awesome at it. And if I am not good at it immediately, I just, and I recognize that there's all sorts of really wonderful things in the world that I miss out on because I lack, uh, let me practice using my words in positive ways. In the past, my history has been that I struggle to to find a discipline to stick with something, to practice it, to get to a place of more skill, not to mention mastery. And things like snowboarding. Oh, so many friends. Oh man, it's so fun. You got to come out. You got to come out. Oh, okay. All right. This looks awesome. All right, let's do it. And after an afternoon of cold, wet, bruised butt, I was like, this sucks. I look like an idiot. I'll be in the lodge. And I never went back. I say that not as a source of pride. That's actually pretty embarrassing. Because I still know people, I mean, as the winter comes, I know some people are like, oh, yay, the snow's here. We can go snowboarding. And I'm like, (sighs) it's kind of like if you've got friends that always beat you at chess. Like, I don't want to play chess. I don't want to lose again. And part of that is because of that mentality that I just said, I want to lose again. Snowboarding is not a win or lose proposal. It's an experience. The joy is in the experience, right? Yeah, I need to learn that. I need to practice that. Lots of people talk about practice and how it is this, um, you have to practice to get to a place of skill and mastery. Mark and Glad, what's his name, Malcolm Gladwell, his book, The Outliers, I think that's the book it's mentioned, and he says that uh, if you 10,000 hours of practice will create mastery in anything. And I just read something this week uh, by Pavlina, I think is maybe it is. And he r- posted a blog post where he said that if you read a, a book a week, a nonfiction book a week, in whatever your field is, in five to seven years, you will be a world-recognized expert in that field. It's kind of a neat idea that if you practice anything with discipline, you will be world renowned. Now, if you want to be, because that's a place to be uh, a career wise, if you want to be able to be hireable in whatever the field is, if you just want to be able to practice it on that caliber and that level, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty encouraging and inspiring thought that you can do anything and practice it and become great at it. Of course, that's also a shitload of hours and a lot of books. I know that the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, but at the same time, (laughs) when you take that first step and then look up and you still got a thousand miles to go or 10,000 hours of practice or 700 books, it's pretty daunting. There's a reason why Alcoholics Anonymous have the phrase, one day at a time. It's because it's so... uh, uh, Really? 
I've got to do this for a thousand hours or I've got to do this forever. Forget it. I don't even, eh. I'll just go back to what I was doing, get the patterns I was in, turn the TV back on, hit Facebook, whatever it is. And I am guilty of that. I am guilty of, of looking at the, the path ahead and going, oh man. I don't have it in me. But practice is not just about getting to mastery. In fact, that's a trap. That's a surefire way to make practice feel Argh. The first yoga class I ever went to, that was what struck me. It was the way that they talked about practice. This is your practice. Wherever you are is perfect in your practice. The teacher, we're talking about their practice. The head of the studio and their practice. Like what? Where are the black belts in yoga? There's no such thing. Every, the whole point of yoga is to have a practice and that whatever you do in that day, in that moment is perfect. Some days you're gonna be more limber, some days less. It's not a linear path of growth. It's a practice. Now, it may well be a linear path of growth or semi-linear. You may get to a place where you're able to do more and more poses or things. Actually, this morning, I did my very first headstand in a yoga class. Last time I did a headstand, I, I think was wearing OP shorts and uh, was a champion uh, foursquare player, meaning in elementary school. So. Now, if I was going, every time they do the inversion time in yoga class, if I was like, come on, I can do this, I'm gonna get to the, then every time I fell or didn't do it, it would be frustrating. But it's like, all right, I'm gonna try this today. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm on my elbows, I'm gonna see if I can straighten my legs. And then I was like, is anybody seeing this? Is anybody seeing this? Because I fell back into the elementary school attitude of like, watch me dive, watch me dive, time me, dad, time me. It was so funny when I finally realized that my dad was never watching. He would just go, how long did that take? And he'd be like, that was, um, uh, that was 32 seconds. That was good. That was better than last time. I'd be like, yes! I'm going to do it again. Okay. How long was that one? Oh, that, that, was, uh, that was 34 seconds. Good job, but not as good as last time. Oh. Anyway. So... The practice in the yoga sense is liberating. And it is what we need to bring into all aspects of life because it allows whatever is happening in the now to be the experience. I love the, the term, uh, what is it? The journey is the destination. Like meaning that, I mean, and I think that's trite. We all know that, you know, it's not the destination, it's the journey. But it still is so easy to get pulled into that. Especially when we, there's so much of what we try to do in life is to get to that place of mastery, to get to that expertise, to get that place of prestige or respect or that goal. And it's fine to have those goals. In fact, they keep us on track and they keep us heading in a direction when it feels right. But we need to watch that balance so that we don't get so attached to that goal that one, we find ourselves swimming against the current when that is the case and two, that we don't enjoy the process as it's happening. This weekend at Marvin's birthday, he invited me to give a Hug Nation talk uh, to start the evening show. And then he gave a talk, which was great. It was, it was, it was, it was actually, as he was talking, I was like, I'm not sure if I was necessary here. Like he gave an awesome Hug Nation style talk about our purpose and, and the, it, it, was, it was inspiring to see him spread this message and this light and this, this integrity of his path because he's someone who practices all the time and has this conviction and this passion for his art and his love comes through in it. And he said something really beautiful. He said that when I first was doing this, I practiced because I wanted to be the best. I wanted, I practiced to be perfect. Practice makes perfect. And he would drill and drill and drill and do harder and harder and more crazier moves and smoother and more, just trying to be the best. 
kind of practicing so that when he could perform, it would blow minds. And he said, now I realize I practice to get present. And that as I am doing poi or manipulating balls, whatever, I'm trying to be so in the moment that I'm aware of the weight and the shifts of the gravity as things are moving around. And it is that practice that brings me so profoundly in the now. He said, practice makes present. I love that. Yes, practice makes perfect. But in the meantime, practice makes present. And becoming present, finding a way to be present, as we talked about in the, in the intro meditation, it is in the now that life is experienced. It is in the present awareness of life as it is happening, becoming present, coming into the now, that life becomes infinite, that life becomes rich, that we become aware of things way beyond our plans and thoughts and our, this, these, this tiny piece of the experience of life. Life is not experienced as a focal point. Life is broad. In many ways, Hugnation is a perfect example of practice makes present. We're not trying to get anywhere. The practice of being in this moment, of receiving, of having this time is an exercise in becoming present, an exercise in tuning into the now and in that present moment, in that now, in that awareness beyond thought, is when our true divine love vibrations start to fill us up. It's when intuition whispers to us. It's when the patterns and flow of life start to reveal themselves in ways that we don't think through, that we simply feel into. Practice makes present. It was important for me to hear because lately I've been really thinking a lot about What's next for me? How am I going to get to this next level of professionalism, of career things? Start thinking about the book that I'm working on. Start thinking about I need to write every day and I'm specking out an outline of essays that I need to write or pieces of the book that I need to write. And all of a sudden, the practice of writing became a path. And in that place of getting someplace, whether it is professional speaking gigs or whatever, you know, those are the things that I've got on the horizon that I'm heading towards, I've suddenly lost the experience of the now. As I'm writing, I'm not in the present. And I think that's one reason I've been struggling is because I sit down and instead of letting the muse speak and letting the words out and getting in the zone, I'm thinking about this is a step towards that. Let's go. Let's make it happen, let's force it, let's steer more instead of float more. So it was really profound for me to hear that this weekend and to see this community of people in the Flow Temple group in LA and California and the world that are dedicated to this craft of flow arts and the practice of it. And they do it not to perform, but they do it to get present, <clears throat> inspiring. And I think it's something we can all practice. So let's get present now. And have a Hug Nation hug. Grab yourselves by the shoulders. And in this present moment, allow ourselves to be become aware, not of where we're headed, not of where we've been, but in the miracle of now, the miracle of consciousness, the miracle of life, the miracles of sensation and perception, and the countless, near infinite patterns and harmonies and unfolding processes of this universe that we simply are a part of at all times when we can pull out of our conscious minds.
practice makes present. And when we get out of the present, we get into our story, suddenly we're on a path and we need to get someplace and there are obstacles and there are people that are at odds with us. And let's try to remember when we get too out of whack, too frustrated, to pull back into the present, to recognize that even our struggles, even our arguments, even our frustrations are part of our practice. The interactions with other human beings, those perfect teachers that reflect to us what we need to work on, what we need to practice, things like forgiveness and patience and compassion. Let's take three breaths together and practice consciously what we do all day long as part of the experience of living. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Inhale love, share it with the world. Inhale love, share it with the world. Thank you for who you are and who you're becoming and the practice that you endure, that you take on, that you embrace during your journey of becoming you. It is a gift to us all. It is what tunes us in to the experience beyond thought it is love, light, and divinity shining through us. And it is a gift to us all. Thank you for being you, walking your walk, shining your light. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and all the love warriors, happy Hug Nation. Thank you. I love you. Namaste. That's it. I'm, this, I'm facing my fears. I'm gonna practice. Hold on one second. Okay. Here's my boy that Dimitri gave me. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that's, that's four seconds. Just gotta do the six hours a day. Thousand hours of this, ten thousand hours of this. But see, that's the problem. I need to more just go, okay, let's feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Ah, oh, actually, Dimitri, my dear, dear friend, he would do this during meetings. Like high end executive boardroom meetings as he's brainstorming and talking to investors and stuff because. He found that it kept him in this state of presence and allowed his mind to go to places and focus on things. So it was a really cool thing. He would walk into the office and see him walking around doing this. Not quite there yet. Although, I am still talking. You only live once. Enjoy the color.